and good morning, good afternoon, and a very good evening to you. We're going to people with you. Hope you're all today. Hope you're feeling grand and always well in your world. Hello there, everybody. Today's video, we are going to talk about uh, dying in the amp. Dying in your amp. The amp? The amp. Why not the amp? The amp or you amp or the, the amp, as in the old Behringer thing. Anyway, it's been a long weekend. Anyway, um, yes, uh, dying in an amp. Um, I'm going to talk about how I do it and my little philosophy on it, so to say. Um, the number one most important thing when dialing in an amp, especially if it's not yours, like if, you, if you've ever been to like a gig or anything and you kind of like, like on a borrowed or rented back line, you know, and you don't know what you're going to get. The main thing I think you always need to know is what sound you want. You know, you, you need to know in your head what you want. You know what I mean? Like, it, you know, it, it, it's... I always think it's kind of like... It's kind of counterproductive to kind of like go to an amp and not know what you want out of it. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, if you just plug into it and you just start kind of like dialing up a million different sounds without really kind of knowing what you want. Uh, you know, you need to have a very clear picture in your head of what you... What, what sound you want out of that amp and what do you want it to... You know, what do you want it to do? Do you want it to be... Super overdriven. Do you want it to be kind of clean for pedals? What you know? What do you want it to do? So that's kind of like key. That's kind of like the main important kind of part of when you're dialing in an amp, either it be your amp or a new amp or, or, or a rented amp or a, a borrowed backline amp or whatever, is you need to know what you want out of it. You know, there's no good. I don't think personally, go into an amp and just plug it into it and just kind of like you know just tweaking it forever. You know what I mean? Because that. that that leads down the road of not playing music. You're just tweaking an amp. You know, you're not playing technically. You're just kind of like messing around, so to say. So that's kind of key. It's always really important to know what you want out of an amp. For instance, uh, me, for instance, when I plug into an amp, um, I don't ever plug straight into an amp. Well, on occasion I do, but most of the time I don't. I like to have pedals. I don't really like going straight into amps, to be honest with you. I find it very... Not... Not limiting, but it, it is in a way, you know what I mean? It's like, you know, it, it's all well and good just going straight into an amp and just kind of like doing everything from the guitar and the amp and having no pedals on the floor. But I've always loved pedals and I always will love pedals. I like the variety of sounds you can get from pedals. You can go from one thing to another. I like reverbs, delays, uh, wahs, you know, different kind of overdrives, choruses you know, phasers. Uh, you know, I, I like all those like, like, you know, little textures you can get from pedals. Going straight from a guitar into an amp is is fun, and it's really really cool uh, sometimes. But uh, I've always loved pedals, so and I get predominantly uh, most of my sound from pedals. So um, I do apologise for the lawnmower outside. Anyway, <laughs> don't you know I'm doing a video? Damn it! Anyway, um, but yeah, I've always used pedals. So what I want from an amp is. Mainly, when, I, when I'm playing live, an amp is just a clean platform. That's all it is for my pedals to sit on. All my sound may, basically comes from pedals. So, for instance, like, um, using the CL120 today, uh, I'm using the Dirty Channel. I always really use Dirty Channels as well, or Overdrive Channels. I never really use Clean Channels. There's only one amp I can think of ever that I've used where I've used a Clean Channel, and that's the... Um, Fender Stage that I used to own, the Fender Stage 100 uh, DSP combo. Uh, and that was the only time I ever used a clean channel. Other than that, I always used dirty channels for my pedals. I just thought, I like the sound more, and it was something I found a long, long time ago that I just prefer the way pedals sound through a, an overdrive channel run clean. It's a bit weird, but... Um, and your amp doesn't run super, super loud when you do it that way because obviously it's an overdrive channel and you're running the gain clean. So, anyway, anyway, that's not important. But what I'm after in an amp when I plug into it is it just to give me clean power. That's all I want. I don't want it to be uh, broken up. The pedal pedals will do that for me. I don't want it to be kind of like, you know, super saturated or anything like that. I just want it to give me a nice, flat, kind of cleanish tone that has... Elements of John Fashanti to it. So, so um, turn this up a bit. So, invariably, this is the kind of like clean tone I go for. It's really 
really snappy, really, really clean. It's, it's almost, you know, shadows clean, you know what I mean? It's really... You know, there's no, there's no hint of distortion. You know, every, every note's clean and clear. So that's what I want from an amp when I'm plugging into it. And then what I'll do is I'll just stick the jackhammer on over the top, which is my main sound. That's kind of like my always on pedal. And then it, it, that should, you know, it just, it, it adds the fatness and the girth that I want and, and also adds the gain. So basically all the amp to me is, it's just a clean thing. You know what I mean? I, that, that's the way I run an amp. And invariably, if it's not my amp, what I tend to do is I dial it in with the jackhammer on. So I won't dial it in to this kind of tone. I'll turn the jackhammer on and uh, play with it until it sounds right. Um, and, uh, the, you know, being where I am gigging wise, there are many, many gigs and, and quite a lot of gigs I've had to do where you've turned up and that's the amp you've got to use. You know, get on with it, kind of, basically. Um, and invariably, like I say, I just I go for an overdrive channel and run the gain super, super, super low and uh, then kind of tweak from there. Um, so, but, but again, the thing is, the reason I can kind of, I, I always kind of feel comfortable doing that is because, like I said, I, in my head, I know what sound I want. So, for instance, like my clean tone, I want it to sound like John Fashanti. My kind of rhythm, kind of distortion tone, this tone, uh, which will be a bit loud if I run it there. You know, that kind of sound, I want it to be kind of like a big um, kind of rock sound. And I always check the rhythm tone with palm muting. You know what I mean? I, I like it to sound really nice palm muting. Like that. It, and it, it just sounds really, you know, if it sounds like that, then I'm a happy bunny. And also on the neck pickup as well, it needs to be kind of smooth, but cutting kind of... You know, I'm happy with that kind of thing. You know what I mean? So, um... So, yeah, that's kind of key point one, if you will. Beware of tangents, everybody. They're going to happen. Um... That's key point one of dialing in an amp, is you need to know what you want out of that amp. You need to know what sound you want. Either it kind of is based on somebody, or, you know, it's got a specific kind of thing that you know you like. Um, that's what you need to do. That is kind of, that's key. That is it's so important. Uh, and that's key when you're kind of going to buy a new amp as well. If, you're, if you go into a shop and you don't really know what you're after, then you could be there all day. But if you have a clear idea in your head of what you want and, you know, what, what tones you want, what you want the amp to do, does it, want, does it need to be channel switching? Do you want it for just kind of uh, like clean for pedals? You know, do you want it to do, do you want it for clean and straight in? You know, do you want it for multi-purpose kind of thing? Uh, you need to know these things. So before you kind of like start dying in the amp, ask yourself what you want, which is key to everything, really. Um you know, in the sound, you know, what do you want out of the amp, you know, what, what do you want it to sound like, you know, what do you want the clean tone to sound like, what do you want the distortion tone to sound like, what do you want your lead tone to sound like, you know, those kind of like core tones that you're going to use, you need to know what they sound like in your head before you dial them in, because if you don't know what they are, you will be there forever, you know what I mean, never, never satisfied, you know, you're always going to be tweaking it and you can spend hours and hours and hours just going... <laughs> You know, I mean, like that, and it, that isn't really what you want to be doing. You want to be just kind of like, you know, my idea of like a good amplifier is is, is, is idea of set it and forget it. You know, once it's set, you don't have to worry about it anymore. Once it's down, once you've got the sound you like. Once you've got that sound you like, you don't have to touch it again. You know, that, that, that's the idea that, um, that kind of like is, is behind my kind of philosophy on, on dialing in an amp tone or your tone. You know, is once it's done, you don't have to worry about it anymore. That can vary with certain amplifiers. Um, it's one of the main reasons I like solid state so much is you get that consistency no matter what. I mean, the settings I have on my CL120 and my Marshall MG have never changed since I got it. As soon as this amp sounded right, that was where it stayed. As soon as this amp sounded right, that's where it stayed. 
uh, and I've never touched it since. And the same with the Boss Katana as well. As soon as I got the Boss Katana, once it was set where I had it, where that's what I wanted, I've never touched it again. And the only time that's I've, that's ever kind of gone out the window, that kind of idea of like you know having a set kind of setting and then being able to leave it, was when I had my 50 watt small box Plexi. Uh, because of the places I play, um, like pubs and and small very small clubs. Power is an issue. Power consistency is a real massive issue. So if a power dipped, the amp would darken off. If a power increased, the amp would get brighter. It was a real slave to how these things were. And all it took, it was really weird, but it's, it's true, I promise you. It's, it, well, it might be a bit in the right, but it is kind of true. All it took was for somebody to go to like you know a, a 10p machine in the pub or the club and put 10p in it and it to fire up to dip the power slightly and the amp would ch sound different. It, it was it was very strange. I had it with a JCM 800 as well. It was a nightmare and I didn't like that. I didn't like the idea. Some people love it. Some people love, love the idea of the amp constantly changing. I don't. I like consistency myself. I like things to sound a certain way all the time. I don't like to change anything. As soon as it's dialed in, I don't want to have to touch it or remember or mess with it or whatever. And once it's done, forget it. Because um, I just want to play the guitar. I'm not interested in kind of like constantly searching for an elusive kind of tone, so to say. So yeah, so anyway, back to the point. Number one, number one point of today is in your head, you need to know what you want. Just full stop. You know, you need to know what sound you want and how do you want your amp to sound? How do you want it to behave? What do you want it to do? So for me, for instance, I want the amp to just be super clean. And then when I stick a jackhammer or the golden plexi over top or my line 6 HX, it's to do that. And I'll invariably check it with like a John Fashanti riff or another riff I know has that sound that I, you know, I'm quite happy with. I can't play any sadly, but... Um, but yeah, invariably it's it begins with a, with a... It ends with tissue and begins with scar. Anyway, um... But yeah, I invariably check it with something like that, or something in the Jimi Hendrixy kind of style. You know, like that. I'm quite, I'm quite. You know, I just do that kind of thing. And what if it sounds like that? I'm a happy bunny, and because uh, I know that's the sound I like. You know what I mean? So, um, so yeah. Key point number one is always know what you want. Always know what sound you're after. Do not kind of. I, I always think it's really important to know what you want. Don't go down the route of like, you know, oh, I don't know what I want because you're literally just going to be like stuck in like this tone limbo, if you will, forever. So uh, another thing, uh, the, ne the second point I want to get to is know what the guitar sounds like. You know what I mean? This is another key point as well. You need to know what your guitar sounds like because every guitar sounds different. So the guitar you're sound checking an amp with, especially if it's not your amp, you need to know what that guitar sounds like. For instance, I know what this guitar sounds like, and I know how different this guitar sounds to my Oswalds, which I gig with. Uh, this guitar is brighter than the Oswalds. This has got a brighter tone to the, uh, than the Oswalds, but they all work on the same EQ setting, but I know this guitar is kind of like my blueprint for everything I do. But I know for a fact that my other guitars, apart from the 62, are darker than this guitar. This guitar is quite bright. Uh, it's, it, it sounds pretty much identical to the 62, to be honest with you. And um, so I know what I know what the guitar sounds like. So I know for a fact that when I put this guitar in, it'll sound like that. It's got quite a lot of attack. You know what I mean? It's quite, you know, especially on the neck pickup, which you know is my favourite pickup. I, it, it's quite, you know. There's a lot of clarity there, a lot of ring to it. Whereas uh, the Oswalds are a little bit darker. You know what I mean? Uh, they're a little bit kind of woolier, they're kind of a bit more. They're a bit more like that. So, because I know that, when I get to a gig, I know for a fact that if I'm playing this guitar, which I don't really gig anymore, but if I know if I'm playing this guitar, I know exactly what the amp should sound like with this guitar. I know what the amp should sound like with my Oswald guitars, and I know what my amp should sound like with my Squire Jag, or whatever, you know what I mean? So know your guitar, know what the guitar sounds like. So you don't, again, it's the same kind of thing as like knowing what you want out of an amp. If you know what your guitar sounds like, then you kind of like, you know, you're winning, you're winning the battle, so to say, because 
if you don't know what this thing sounds like and you're, and you're borrowing at somebody's guitar and you don't really know that guitar, it, it's, a, it's a struggle. You know what I mean? Because if you know this guitar's bright, then you're not going to go crank up the treble on the amp. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I, I, I wouldn't go to... I, I, I wouldn't go... Uh, if I was, like, you know, renting a... Uh, if I had, like, a, a rented amp backline and I was using my pedal board, I wouldn't go to the amp and just start turning up the uh, treble all the way knowing that this guitar is quite bright. You know what I mean? I wouldn't do that. I I, I would... I always leave treble off. But I'd start with the bass and the mids and uh, go from there. So always know what your guitar sounds like. You know, what is your... You know, ha what does your guitar do... You know, is it is it quite aggressive? Is it kind of mid-rangey? Is it kind of like really boxy? Is it honky? You know, what is it? What does your guitar sound like? So that's, again, it comes down to kind of knowing your gear as well, which brings me very neatly into the next part. Know what your pedals sound like as well. You know, when you're dialing in an amp, if you're, if you're, if all your tones are coming from a pedal board like mine do, uh, you need to know what your pedals sound like. You know what I mean? You need to know what, the, you know, for instance, my, for, for my thing, I need to know what the jackhammer sounds like before it, you know, before I get, you know, dialing in the amp. I know that this is what is the jackhammer. You know, I know that's what the, the jackhammer sounds like. So any amp that I plug into now, I know that's the sound that I, I'm after. So, and again, that just comes down to that kind of generic kind of like idea of like, you know, you need to know your gear inside out. You need to know everything about it. You need to know every little nook and cranny of your pedal board and your tone that you want. Okay, you need to know everything about what you want to hear. You know, I mean, like I say, for instance, my, my, the core of my sound, my, core of my sound, I don't know what happened there. I went to West Country. Um, core of my sound is based in Joff Shanty. You know what I mean? It, it, it's kind of like a lift of his tone. You know, like Jimi hendrix kind of, clean but slightly overdriven clean tone and um you know when it when it goes to kind of lead tones it wants to be really singy <laughs> you know I, I don't like I, I i don't like playing like you know like staggered like that it has its place but i don't really like it anyway so yeah, that's that's kind of like the key. That's kind of like the key three points, really. It's kind of two points, really, if you know. But you need to know what you want from your amp and the sound you want from your amp. You know, before you plug into it, you need to know what your guitar sounds like. You need to know what your pedals sound like. You know, before you plug into it, you need to just spend time with these things, just understanding them, and then you know, then you'll find that when you go to plug into an amp, it's just ten times easier because you know immediately what you want. So. Um, what I do invariably when I go to an amp, uh, if I'm plugging straight in, or if I'm not plugging straight in, to be honest with you, this is what this is kind of like a rule of thumb for me. And this is what I've always done. People always say you should start with the EQ at twelve o'clock. I've never ever done that, and I've never liked doing that. I've always always hated that. I, I always start with the EQ at zero, uh, and that's just something that I've always done. Um, I found out very, very early on in my guitar playing life that I liked darker, warmer tones. And I found I could get that more by having the EQ lower. I mean, people would always tell me, oh, you need to turn your EQ up, you know, to this and the other. But as soon as I turn the EQ up on an amp, like if I turn the treble up or the, or the mids up, I don't like the sound. It, 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 there's certain frequencies that I cannot stand. Uh, the treble on the MG and the treble on the CR120, plugging straight into it, I cannot hack that frequency. When I'm plugging my pedal board into it, treble is a need on the CR120. I don't use treble on the Marshall, but I need treble on the CR120 because it's a really dark amp. I think the CR120 is a quite dark amp, especially where I run it, uh, which is one of the reasons I absolutely adore it, because it's got a really warm tone to it. But um, but yeah, this is another thing. I've always thought that you should always start with EQ on zero. I mean, this isn't going to work for everybody. Some people are just going to find it really dark. But I like the idea of starting at nothing and working your way up to something. So for instance, like if I, you know, just as an example, uh, it's kind of like a bit biased really because I know where I want everything on the amp. But for instance, if I start on zero now and I have the jackhammer engaged. So, so, so let's just kind of put this into like a theoretical situation. So... I've turned up at a gig and there's this amp that I've never played through before. Um, and um, 
you know, I need to run my pedal board through this amp and I've only got five minutes to get my sound and sound check and then we've got to play, which is normally the case, which is very annoying. I hate doing that. But anyway, so what I would immediately do is I'd go up to the amp, I'd plug everything into it and I'd immediately look at the dirty channel. That's what I'd immediately do. I'd go to overdrive channel and I would turn, if the dirty channel's got a volume and the amp itself has got a master volume, I would immediately turn the channel volume all the way up to 10. So I want the most volume out of this thing as I can because I've got the gain so low. You know, the amps, I run amps really quiet. I don't like loud amps, you know what I mean? I don't really, I've, even though I've always used half stacks and stuff, I never, I've never really enjoyed super, super loud. It, it, I, 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 it's an ear thing. I, I don't really like loud noise. I have a bit of a problem dealing with stuff like that. It's, it triggers certain things that I don't enjoy. Anyway, um... So that's what I'd immediately do. I'd, I would turn the channel volume all the way up. I would turn the master to just kind of break through. I'd just kind of basically do this. I'd turn the volume all the way up. I'd probably put the gain about two, you know what I mean? So nine o'clock, so kind of like there, if uh, as, as you're looking. And I would just kind of like just roll the volume in, make sure everything works. So I'd make sure I'm getting a signal. And then I would go to the EQ section and I would start with bass. Okay, so what I would do is I would leave it where I would leave the gain, I'd leave the volume where it is, and I would add them as and when I needed, when I got the sound I'm after, when I've got the tone I'm after. So I would start with the bass dial. So immediately you can tell, just playing that, that's enough bass, and the bass is on zero. I don't need to add any to that. If I add any to that, it's just going to sound even woollier. And it's really flubby. You know, any, it just sounds naff. I don't like that. So. I would leave the bass at zero. I'd be like, immediately no. I can almost hear that John, Fia John Fashanti, Jimi Hendrix S kind of sound in there with the EQ on zero, but I know for a fact that that's enough bass. You can hear it is. So then I'd go to a mid-range dial and I'd probably bring it up to about two. Okay, still not, not, not mid-range mid, mid -range enough, not bright enough. We're getting there. That's at 12 o'clock now, so that's straight up. So again, I'm a bit biased because I know I know the setting I have on the app, but just you know theoretically. But there we go, there it is. And that's not quite where I have it, is it? No, not quite. But there we go. So that's quite high. That's on seven, and I always run mids really high. I've always run mids on my MG about seven, and I've always run MG, uh, the mids on the CR at seven. But you can start to hear it's starting to take on its. John Fashanti kind of thing. And like I say, there's, and there's plenty of bass there. With the bass out, you know, turned all the way down, there's still plenty of oomph. You know what I mean? But it's still too dark. You know what I mean? If that was the MG, that's fine. I don't, I, you know, sometimes I'll run the bass off on the MG and just use the mids and never use, I never use the treble or the contour on the MG. CL120 is a different animal altogether. It's a darker sounding amplifier. So, then I would go to the treble. If the amp had a presence, I would bypass the treble and I'd go straight to the presence. I wouldn't touch the treble, but the CR120 doesn't have a presence. So I'd go to the treble then. And I'd like, because that's, that's, that's still too dark. That's still too woolly, even with the mids quite high. So then what I'd do is I'd bring in the treble and again, put it to about nine o'clock. We're getting, you know, we're starting to get somewhere there. It's starting to get brighter. Bring it up a bit higher. You know, it's bringing up the right treble frequencies, which is another reason why I love this amp. And then I'd probably bring it up even higher. And then all of a sudden, I'm there. I'm happy. The CL120 is one of those really rare amps where I have to use the treble dial to get it uh, brightened up. And I actually run treble and middle at seven. Uh, so I have no bass and I have treble and middle at seven. It's one of the rare occasions I actually use treble. But for that kind of clean tone and using pedals, the treble really adds a lot to the amp. It's really, really nice. However, plugging straight into the CL120, into the dirty channel, if I want full gain, the EQ is always on zero. Uh, bass, treble, middle, I always run them on zero. I will never, ever turn them up unless I'm using pedals or trying to get a clean tone, in which case I'll probably make this treble everywhere. So, 
That's what I would do. That's how I would do it. I would just basically kind of like, you know, crank the, vo crank the channel volume and then bring up and, and put the gain about 9 o'clock-ish, 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, you know, tweak to kind of like, you know, to hear it. And then I'd bring the master volume in to make sure I'm getting signal. And then I would start quickly tweaking on the EQ. Start with the bass, go to the mids, and then go to the treble if I have to. But the treble is last resort. If I don't have to go to the near the treble, uh, I won't. You know what I mean? I'll, I'll invariably just leave it on zero. But I say the CL20 being quite dark, I need to kind of boost it. So that's what I would do. And because I know what sound I'm after, it's I'm after that John Fashanti, you know, kind of, kind of clean tone. I I know when it'll I know what'll sound right, and especially if you start playing one of their songs, you you know. So um so that's what you want to kind of do it. And then after I've done that, you know, I'm away. Once it's set and I've got that sound, I don't have to think I don't think about it anymore. I'm ready for the gig. You know what I mean? So because I know what I want, I've dialed in the amp, it sounds the way I want it to, I shouldn't have to touch it again. So and uh, pedals if the jackhammer's responding well to the amp, audio pedal, I know for a fact that audio pedals will, because the jackhammer is kind of controlling everything else. You know what I mean? Because the jackhammer's always on. No matter what I do from that point on, everything will be fine, because the jackhammer's controlling it. So if the jackhammer sounds the way it should, and the amp sounds the way it should, and it sounds like that John Fashanti tone, I know for a fact my governor will work, the DS2 will work, and the Ibanez Wire will work, or the the Vox wire will work, or whatever, you know what I mean? Or the delays will work as well. So, uh, so yeah, there we go. Um, that's what I would do. That's how I always do it. I always have done everything from zero. I've never I've never liked the whole idea of, you start with everything at 12 o'clock and you work from there and you take away all your ad as, as if. And it's like, the only way I can understand that is if you're on a PA desk and it's got parametric EQ or, or just, the, just the normal EQ where you're cutting and boosting, but you're not on a guitar, but it's totally different. Um, so, so yeah, that's my philosophy on that, so to say. So, just a bit of a recap. So, know what you want from your amp and know the sound you want from your amp. What do you want it to sound like? And are you going straight into the amp or are you going to use pedals? If so, what do your pedals sound like? What do, you know, you need to know what your pedals do and how they sound before you know you kind of dial that in because so you know, and then kind of like you know you just need to go for that sound you want, and then also kind of knowing again what your guitar sounds like. You know, know what this thing does. You know, all pickup select uh, selections. Know what it kind of sounds like with the volume up, volume down. You know, all sorts of things. So, um, and I, I say if you're going straight in, the same rules apply know exactly what you want from this thing and this thing before, you know, before you even get anywhere near it. You know what I mean? Know exactly what tone you want. You know, do you want a kind of an ACDC kind of tone? Do you want a full out saturated kind of shred tone? Do you want like a metal tone? You know, know what, knowing what you want is absolute key to anything. It really is. Because otherwise you're just kind of like, you know, you're kind of like this. You're kind of fumbling around in the dark, you know, trying to find the light switch, so to say. So knowing what you want it really is key. So, um, is there anything else I need to talk about? Uh, so yeah, that that's basically what I do. That that's that's my kind of thing, and like that's my kind of like philosophy on kind of like um, how to dial in your you know an, an amp and, and in your sound. It, you you need to know what you want, and that's the same with anything really. You know, when you go to a guitar shop and you want to buy a new guitar or a new amp or a new pedal or a new lead, you know, you need to know what you want. You know what I mean? There's no good kind of like, you know, just like I say, fumbling around in the dark like this trying to find a light switch. Where is it? You know, it's... That's going to detract from the fun of making music because kind of like all you're going to end up doing is just kind of like tweaking. You know what I mean? And, and, and I've seen it a million trillion times. There was, there was a couple of people who used to come into Old Hat who were constantly unhappy with the sound they had. But you would... They were like... like they would bring in like amazing gear. Like I remember one guy bought in like a Dave Gilmore Strat and a Victoria amp uh, basement clone, and uh, he said I want it to sound like Dave Gilmore, but I can't get it to sound like Dave Gilmore. You plug in to it, and within a couple of seconds, if you can't, you know, Dave Gilmore tone. Okay, so what does Dave Gilmore sound like in my head? Okay, it sounds like yeah. <laughs> Okay, 
you know, you do that and you go, oh, that's the sound I want. So, hang on a minute, what? You know what I mean? And you don't want to be like that. You don't want to be constantly like, you know, oh, I'm not happy with this. I need to go out and buy loads of stuff. I need to buy this. I need to buy that. You know what I mean? Just, you know, you need to, you need, you need to be, you need to know what you want in the first place, if you know what I mean. Otherwise, you're just kind of like, you know, you're just going to, like say, fumbling around in the dark forever. And, it, you know, you don't want that. You want to be, as quick as you can kind of get to the sound you want, the better. Because then you're able to play. You know, you're able to kind of practice and play and have fun. Instead of kind of worrying about, does that sound good? Or does that sound like I want it to sound, you know. As soon as you have that sound that you know you like, you know, you're, you're away, so to say. So, um... So yeah, I, I, I hope there's been something in this video for, that made sense. I don't know, I've kind of waffled again. But, um, oh, I don't know. I've got a fear. Hopefully this isn't... Oh, if it... Oh, is it rubbish? I don't know. I don't know. Is this review of rubbish people? I don't know. Am I talking nonsense? So anyway, I, I, I think this made sense. Know what you want from your amp. Know what your guitar sounds like. Know what your pedal sounds like. Know that... Once you've got the sound you want, you know, you shouldn't have to mess with it too much unless it's, you know, it's a certain, you know, unpredictable amplifier. Uh, again, another reason why I love solid state so much is it's just consistent. Every time I turn this on or turn this on, they've never checked, they, they, don't, they don't sound any different. You know what I mean? No matter what's going on with the power or whatever, they always sound the same. I just breathed in loads of my own hair and it went almost to the back of my throat. That would have been fun. Retching on camera. Um, so, yeah, so, no... Knowing your gear is key. Knowing everything about it is key. And especially if you have to go to a gig and where somebody says, oh, you've got to use my amp, you can't use yours because of, I don't know, ease ease of use if they've got quick turnaround times um, or pat test issues. Sometimes, you know, if your amp hasn't been pat tested recently, some venues won't let you use it because they'll, but you have to use whatever's there kind of thing. So, um... So yeah, I do apologise for the noise, everybody. It's just it's chaos today outside. For some reason, like everyone just everyone's decided to start doing things as I start to do a video. So I do apologise for that. Hopefully, you can still hear me and it's not too distracting. Um, so it's a lawnmower and now it's a pressure washer. So really, anyway, but yeah, that is key. That is really key. And like I say the number one rule, in my opinion, is know what you want tone-wise. You know, if you have to base it on somebody, that's fine. You don't have to be kind of like, you know, it's like, no, I'm, I, I need an original tone. You don't, you don't have to have an original tone. You know what I mean? If you listen to people like John Mayer, it, you know, his, his tone is a million miles away from Steve Ray Vaughan and a couple of other guitarists. You know, John Fashanti isn't a million miles away from Jimi Hendrix, you know. Um, you know, even, even Jimi Hendrix isn't a million miles away from people like Buddy Guy in certain respects, you know. And you know, it's it, you know everyone's kind of bases their sound on somebody else, but you always kind of want to create like a bit of a cacophony, really. Kind of like you know, I always want my sound to sound, you know, seventy percent of the time I want my tone to sound like John Fashanti. Another ten percent of the time I want it to sound like you know Jimi Hendrix and then Rory Gallagher and Peter Green. I like to smash them all together and create that kind of one tone where you kind of like you can go from one thing to the other. You know what I mean? So you can kind of go from that Jimi Hendrix, John Fashanti. <laughs> To kind of that Roy Gallagher kind of You know, I think we can kind of always get those kind of pinch harmonic -y kind of things and that kind of that kind of thing. And then it's gonna to go to kind of like that Peter Greeny. You know, Peter Greeny, Paul Kossoffy thing. So most of the time, I just want to be John Shanty, but I, 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 I want it to kind of be a cacophony of all of them, really. Kind of, you know, you want to kind of emulate your heroes, really, because that way you end up sounding like yourself when you, you know, when you can't, I'd say. So is that, is that amazing saying that John Mayer said, you know, you sound like yourself when you fail to sound like your heroes? I say that all the time, but it's really true. Anyway, I really hope I haven't wasted your time with this video, people of the tube. I really hope it's made some kind of sense, and I hope. Um, you know, I hope, I hope there's something in there you can kind of take away that if you are struggling to dial in an amp or, or whatever, you know, hopefully there might be something in this video you can, you know, that helps, you know, helps out on that front, so to say. Because it really is an important part of playing the guitar is being able to kind of like understand your gear and being able to kind of dial in the sound you want regardless of the amp you go. You know, I'm quite happy to plug into anything. 
as long as I've got a guitar that I know, like for instance, any of my guitars, I mean, I, I gig, I don't gig with this guitar anymore because I'm afraid that someone will steal it. So I'm afraid of people stealing all my stuff because you hear those horrific horror stories of people saying somebody stole my guitar and you're just like, I literally don't want to take any guitars to a gig. I'll just turn up and just do it with my mouth. You know what I mean? Then somebody can't steal it. Then get someone coming along trying to steal your voice. Anyway. So yeah. When you get when you gig in, you know, you just um I've kind of lost the point. <laughs> I got I got distracted by my own stupidity. But yeah, you really do want to know exactly what your gear sounds like. You know, and, and uh, like I said, I'm quite happy to go to anywhere and plug into anything. As long, you know, as long as I've got my guitar and my pedals, I'll plug into any amp. I don't care what it is. It could be anything from a fender to a Mesa Boogie tri triple rectifier, you know. It, I will find a way to make it work, you know what I mean? It might not sound 100% like this or this, but I will make it work and I will get the sound that I want out of it because I know what I want. And because I know what I want, half a battle's already won. You know, the other half of battle is just getting it out of the amplifier. And I always find that starting with the EQ on zero helps that fight, you know what I mean? Because every amp responds in a different way EQ-wise. Some, some amps will have a brighter mid-range or a darker treble, you know what I mean? It, so you've just got to kind of take it as it is, but if you know what you want and you work through the amp systematically, kind of like if you know what the, you want for how the amp to work, you know, you, you, like I said, half a battle's already won before you've even started, you know, so you don't have to approach using another amplifier that's not yours with any kind of anxiety. You don't have to worry about that kind of, oh no, what if it sounds rubbish? What if I can't get the sound I want? You know, if you know what you want, and you understand what your gear, and you know how your gear sounds, this is easy. And you don't have to worry about it. You just got to... And again, another thing that will happen is just experience. You know, over time, you'll just become less and less worried about it, and you'll just know how to do it. So, um, and the more you do it, the more you know. You know what I mean? The, the more you do it, the more you learn, the more you know, the more experienced you get, the, you know, the easier things are. And all of a sudden, it's just like, oh... I can just, you know, I don't care what amp I get now. As long as I got my pedal board, as long as I got my amp, uh, amp, my guitar. It's been a long weekend. Um, you know, once you, know, you know, it's kind of that thing. It's like, you know, once you do, once you know what these things do and what they sound like, and you know what they can do, you know what the limitations are, you know what they're supposed to sound like. Away you go. You know what I mean. You don't have to worry about it. There's no anxiety there. For like, oh no, oh I can't use my own amp. What if it sounds terrible? Oh, what if I can't do? It? You know, like, none of that is in there. All of a sudden, you know, you just kind of like you just turn up, you systematically go through the amp in your own kind of way. I say that that's the way I go through every amp I ever plug into. Um, and then once you've got it kind of set set to kind of like where you want it, which is you know once once you know what you want, it's there. Away you go, because th there's there's so many guitarists throughout the years that I've I've read interviews with or heard interviews with, uh, who who said the same thing. It's like Bernie Marsden said, as long as he's got his fifty nine Les Paul, he didn't care what he plugged into because he knew what that guitar was capable of and he knew what he could get out of it. Um, so you know he knew exactly what you know doesn't matter what amp he played through, he just knew what that amp what that guitar could do, and it didn't matter what the amp was. Uh, same thing with Phil X. Uh, Phil X always said when he dials in an amp, he always wants the amp to sound like a Malcolm Young ACDC rhythm tone. And when he kicks in an overdrive, he wants it to go to Van Halen. So he knows immediately what he wants out of an amplifier. So when he's going to any amp, he knows exactly what he wants. And he knows kind of, well, if he's looking at an amp, goes, well, I need it like an ACDC kind of tone. So I need it kind of like semi kind of broken up. Do, you know, you just... You know, you set the gain halfway. You know what I mean? Just kind of like, you know, go to a, a dirty channel and set the gain halfway to a slightly crunchy kind of tone. So it really helps to know what you want. And it's really cool to base it on somebody, you know, like a really iconic tone. Because once that tone's in your head, you can hear it when it's there and when it's not. You know what I mean? For an amp. So, so yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, there we go, everybody. Uh, that's my philosophy on that. That's how I dial in amplifiers. That's, you know, like I say, that's my little system, so to say. Um, it's the same if I'm plugging straight in as well. All the EQ will go to zero. I will just start at zero and work from there. Um, you know, I do not start with EQ at 12 o'clock or everything at six or anything like that. I've never... I've 
I I've tried that and I hate it every time I every time I've done it I've hated it so hopefully there's something in this video you can kind of take away or, or you know or try you know and uh, and you know and it might just kind of like you know help you along on your journey hopefully I'm I'm, I'm hoping anyway because I'm terrified this is an absolute terrible video I've got the fear everybody the fear is strong with this one it really is um, anyway so yeah uh, there we go like I say. Know what you want sound-wise, know what your guitar sound like, know what your pedals sound like, know the sound you want, and know, and create a system where you know what you're doing with this thing. You know what I mean? Do you want it set for clean, so everything comes from pedals, or do you want to set it kind of like for a kind of like a semi kind of broken up kind of tone, and then use a pedal to boost it? Do you want to set it from clean and then a dirty, so you can pe uh, channel switch? Yeah, know what you want. That is absolutely key. Just ask yourself, what do I want this amp to do? What do I want it to sound like? What do I want from it? You know what I mean? Before you go anywhere with it, uh, always ask yourself that. And once you start doing that, it's like everything just becomes more relaxed. You don't have that anxiety of kind of worrying about like, you know, tone and this, that, the other. Um, you know, and, and tone is subjective anyway. You know what I mean? What one person likes, another person won't. So you just got to go by what you like. You know what I mean? Like, you know, um, you know, there's certain sounds that, you know, some people have told me my, my, my sound is way too dark and way too muddy and it, you know, it doesn't cut through and this and the other. And it's like, well, that's the sound I like. You know what I mean? I'm not about to kind of like change it to be something I don't like. It's going to make me uncomfortable and not make me play happy um, just because somebody doesn't like it. You know, it's all down to what you like. It's personal preference. Just because it sounds woolly. <laughs> sounds way too, it's too dark and you know this and the other. That, and by the way that was what happens when you turn the DS2 on without the jackhammer engage. Anyway that uh, blew out the cobwebs. Um, so yeah just because somebody else doesn't like it doesn't mean it's wrong you know what I mean if you if you like it that's all that matters you know it's all personal preference we're all different we're all individual we all like different things we all have an idea of what we want. So if you want to sound like John Mayer, go for it. If you want to sound like Steve Vaughan, go for it. If you want to sound like John Shanty, go for it. If you want to sound like Jimi Hendrix, go for that. You know what I mean? Go after the sounds you want and emulate people. And through emulation, you will get your own voice. It will happen. It just takes time. All right. All right. I'm going to uh, finish this video here, everybody. Uh, I don't want to waffle anymore because I'm, I'm, my brain's telling me I've just spoke about nothing for 40 odd minutes. Uh, okay. So anyway, stop it, brain. <laughs> anyway. Hope you enjoyed this video, everybody. I hope there's something in there you can kind of take away and, and you know maybe experiment with yourself, just kind of messing around and just kind of thing. And say, just understanding what these things do is key. You know, really, t really taking time to understand them and spending time with them and knowing, you know, what your pedals do, what your amp does, what your guitar does. You know, what what's its limitations? What you know, what what do you want sound-wise out of it is really key. So anyway. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed this video, everybody, and I will see you again on Wednesday um, for another Q&A. Uh, yeah, and uh, have a great morning, afternoon, and a very good evening. And the pressure washer started up again, so that's definitely my cue to go. So thank you very much for watching. Goodbye now. Thank you very much for watching. Let's drown them out. Let's put all the pedals on. Yeah!